Um, so, confidence driven publishing, the idea comes out of the idea of confidence driven development, which you might have heard people talk about over the last few years. The idea, in theory, goes like this. So you propose a talk about something really cool, but as yet unwritten. Time passes, stuff happens, and you give the talk, and everything goes absolutely wonderfully well. That's the theory. The practice is often slightly different. Step one is exactly the same. You propose a talk about something cool, but unwritten. Lots of other stuff that doesn't really move the project forward happens. Uh, and you end up giving a talk which is about all the things that would have happened had all that other stuff not intervened. Conference driven publishing, it turns out, is a lot like that. So some of you would have been at the LPW um, last December, last November. Um, I was there, this is me, oh, <laughs> down here, giving a talk, um, well, a writing talk, in which I talked about writing a book about modern web programming in Perl. And this was my mistake. <laughs> if I could go back in time and stop myself making any mistake ever, it would be this one. It would be take that slide out of the talk. So anyway, the next LPW is on the 12th of December, which is sort of kind of two-thirds of the way there. So how's it going? <laughs> well... <laughs> okay, but what have I done? And actually, when I, when I was doing these next few slides about what I actually, actually have done, I impressed myself because I've done more than I thought I had. So I've got a website, um, but actually those of you that were at the talk will know that I actually got the domain. I'd owned the, the domain for about five years, so I've installed WordPress. <laughs> so that's half an hour's work. Um, I've got a Twitter account, um, but you can't see it, but the most recent tweet is actually on the day of the LPW, the last one. Yeah. Although I did, I think this happened afterwards, the, 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 the icon, so that was another half hour's work. Um, we've got GitHub account, and there's files in the GitHub account. Um, but then there's a plan, I think that's the topics that I'm going to write about. Uh, one of the things I'm most impressed about is there's a, a commit there from someone that's not me. <laughs> <laughs> so I, we, we have contributors. And actually, um, that's from David Dalwood, who um, was so um, fired up by my lightning talk that on the train home he wrote the, the bare bones of a chapter about how HTTP works. But again, that was on the day of the conference, so a long time yeah. ago. Um, there, there, there is some, some, some text. I've written a couple of, of pieces of a couple of chapters. Um, I've also done some thinking. Um, the process of writing a book is important. Um, getting the right tools in place is important. So I had, I had to come up with the idea that I had to. to Dis decide what input format I was going to write, what I was going to actually write the book in, and then I, I wanted easy ways to convert my input format into EPUB, MOBI, and PDF, because that pretty much covers everyone. Um, so there's a, a make file in there, because I'm old school and I use make files. Um, I decided on Markdown as the um, format because it's shiny and cool, and all the cool kids are using it. I found a thing called Padlock, uh, which takes Markdown, I mean, it does many things, but one of the things it does is it takes Markdown and converts it to GitHub. Uh, there's a thing called Kindle Gen, which you can download from the Amazon website, and that, well, again, it converts from many formats, but I'm using it to convert from EPUB to Mobi. Um, and then some of you may have seen a horrible looking GUI for a program called Calibre. Um, but one of the things it does is it converts from EPUB to PDF. Um, and it's actually a command line tool, so you don't have to get involved in all the horrible kind of a GUI. Um, so I've, I've got this process in place in my uh, 
make them up. So I've got mark down files and I can convert them to EPUB and then from EPUB I can build the other things that, that, that I want. So that's another couple of afternoons work, getting that all up and, up and running. But that all happened months ago. What have I been doing since then? Well, this is my kind of the dog ate my home look section of the, of the, of, of, of the talk. So you, you, you remember that slide, the what goes wrong in the practice of um, driven de de development. Well, that's kind of what happened to me. I went on holiday. That was nice. Um, we had a general election at the start of the year, and I absolutely had to write a website, a web app that was monitoring um, what the what politicians were, were saying in, in the run up to the election. So that was basically um, <clears throat> January to May. Um, suddenly, the, if, you, if you read my Pearl blog, you'll have seen a few weeks ago I, I spent a weekend making this rather nice dashboard for all my CPAN modules. Um, another blog post I wrote about um, how I, would, I, I, I took the code that I was using to run my business and put that up on um, GitHub. And so that's the database diagram of that. Um, people that have been talking to me on London PM have, have, have got involved in conversation about this um, application that I'm writing for my um, wife's school, which turns out might, there might actually be business there. So that's nice. Um, I'm preparing for the uh, for Europe. I'm writing talks and I'm practicing talks and stuff like that. Uh, basically, I'm doing all sorts of things that aren't getting this bloody book ready. <laughs> all in all, I'm procrastinating. But, you know, all is not lost. I still have four months. Don't give up on me yet. Well, I suppose that should say. If you see me at the old people. <laughs> <laughs> and if I'm smiling, then you'll know that things have gone reasonably well over the, over the next four months. <clears throat> However, and this is my attempt to bat off all the criticism of my pro procrastination and, and, and push it back onto the audience. There's a big however. Do you remember that tool chain? that I remember, that I mentioned a, a few slides back. The one that was marked down and panned up in Kindle Gen and Calibre. The one that was this diagram. Well, that would work for you, too. The large publishers out there have pretty much, as far as I can see, given up on publishing new Pearl books. Orion still update their classic Pearl books every few years, although they seem to be overdue a new version of, of Learning Pearl at the moment. And um, Rox did, did um, Ovid's Beginning Pearl. Um, Pat still showed out the same old shit. Uh, no Starch Press did that Pearl one line as well, but, there, but there's, there's been the big publishers aren't really pre-producing pre new books. That doesn't mean we have to stop writing them. Amazon makes it really easy to publish and sell books, and there are other places that you can do that, but not necessarily Amazon. <clears throat> How about Pearl Books? Pearl book publishing as a cottage industry. Want to go out and write the books that you want to see, or perhaps persuade other people to buy them. Buy them beer is normally the, <laughs> the um, currency in the community. For example, um, there's a, a book out there called The Plank ha ha Handbook, where um, Miyagawa um, put together some articles, some of them pulled from the um, um, from CPAN. And, Ran through a process probably quite similar to, to, to mine and produced an ebook. It's not on Amazon, but you can buy it from his website. You know, it's about six or eight dollars or, or something. Um, because one of the, the good things about ebooks is that there's no minimum size. You don't have to write a huge, great tome. You can write an ebook that's only 
50 or 100 pages, but as long as you price it right, people will still buy it. Is anyone else in the room old enough to remember this? Yeah. The Pearl Resource Kit was a boxed set of Pearl books that you could buy from Amazon for um, O'Reilly. I think that the units were, came out in about 1997 or something like that. Um, uh, there was about four books in it, and I couldn't find any images of the, um, the books inside it, but one of them, or two of them, two volumes, basically they took the pod from CPAC and converted them into two books. <laughs> <laughs> of course they were out of date by the time they got onto the bookshelves, but that's an idea. <laughs> uh, does anyone else other than me have a copy of, of, of this? No. Um, so about six years ago, uh, Leon took um, all of the, the, the tutorial parts of the documentation for Moose and turned, well, actually turned them into a, a real book because he used a system called Lulu. Does anyone yeah. Yeah, for, for creating uh, I think real books? Sorry? I think one of the books was in the book. Yes, I remember I bought mine from here in uh, Yapsi in this one. So you know, there's an idea, you can, you can take stuff that's already out, out there and you can turn it into a book and it. So you can show the publishers that people still want poems. Or alternatively, you can prove to yourself that people don't want poems. <laughs> After all, that is how Fifty Shades of Grey got started, as a new book. Not suggesting for a second that the book would sell. <laughs> But maybe they had similar scenes. <laughs> um, I read this last year, um, and it's available as an ebook from Amazon. And it's it, it's all about the other you know, um, tells you how to write a book, how to publish a book, and how to get out there and sell your, your book. So this is a classic um, "do as I say, not as I do" moment. Don't procrastinate. Write a book. Next update in Granada in about three or four weeks' time. Thank you very much.